<laughs> some people, some people are snitches. All right, so uh, let's get you started. We're on 12.4. This is on the TNB framework. Uh, T is the tangent vector, N is the normal vector, B is the binormal vector. Uh, since I know I can see when I look at YouTube that uh, most of you, I know, like there's 37 students in class and uh, less than half of you have watched the video, I will point out much to my disappointment, uh, that the way you calculate the tangent vector is you do r prime divided by its magnitude. Once you have that, you can do the normal vector uh, is the derivative of the tangent vector divided by its magnitude. And the binormal vector, when we do it, it wasn't asked for in this problem, uh, but the binormal vector, which unfortunately looks like magnetism, uh, is t cross n. There are other ways of doing it. Uh, when we do the arc length version, there's another formula. Uh, and, and some of this stuff gets easier. And we'll, we'll probably do that after this problem. Someone messaged me LMBO the other day, and I thought, what the fuck? You can't even use laugh my ass off as an acronym. You got to change it to butt. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard James Curse use foul language? No. <laughs> please let, I used to please let me know. I want to hold it over him so I can snitch to him with his, to his father. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be known in freshman year for that one guy that just never curses of high school. I'm like, yeah, this guy just never uh, never curses. And then like, one time I accidentally cursed and they're like everybody just gasped. <laughs> the the person that never curses or uses foul language, when they do, it is a showstopper. That is definitely a thing. Uh, uh, Lawrence claims you curse when you get a bad grade. Is this true, James? No. Because <laughs> I'm I'm feeling inspired to see if I can make this happen. <laughs> I mean, you already got a challenge last night to get 100% on every test. Well, that was for Ben. Yeah. James doesn't deign to uh, use Discord. He's too good for that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> James <laughs> 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 I mean that's not necessarily that's that's necessarily possible. I what? mean I I can't do a Spanish class for the life of me. Like my sophomore year at high school, uh, I got a D in my first semester of Spanish. What made you bring this up? <laughs> well, you you mentioned on Zoom. Oh, the, oh, okay. The, yeah, the, on Zoom. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if it popped up on the screen. The mes Lawrence was saying James only curses when he gets bad grades. And so, and then he added, so never. And I said, well, <laughs> you're making a big assumption here. James, you know, he's got a math teacher for a god. 
who says anything about history or English or the social science or shit like that, James might suck in the non-STEM classes. You never know. <laughs> oh, I have it. I have the chat because so much is going on in the chat. Right, I, that, that's for everybody else in the class. James is getting hazed and he doesn't even know it. I had to include him in on it. All right. Yeah. I hope that's what you guys got. What would be the magnitude of that? Uh, square root of 17. I'm betting that's correct. Just by eyeballing it, let's work it out. Make sure that we match up with that. So we have square root of 16 sine squared T and cosine squared T. I'll group those together since there's 16 on both of them. That obviously goes to one by based on the rules of trigon. Oh, quick, quick note. If you're going to have a trig function to an exponent, you want to write the exponent right there. Like that, put it after that, but before the argument of the trig function, do not write it like this. That is not sine, that is not sine t squared. This looks like sine of t squared don't do this put the square with the sign i'm only bringing that up because someone did this on the test and i need to like nip this shit in the bud now all right so going back uh, i it looks like we do have a square root of 17 right Probably me. i don't know I don't remember who did it. So uh, what does my tangent function look like here? The tangent function is, uh, we, oh, that ain't enough room. Maybe I better just do it over here on the left. We've got negative, I can do the one over root 17 on the outside. Orange doesn't come through very well, does it? Now, if we want to work on the derivatives, we need to find n, which means we need t prime. We still got the one over root 17. This becomes negative four cosine of tangent, or not tangent, of t. This is negative four sine of t, and we got zero in the z component. So the magnitude of this I got square root of 17 on bottom for both. It's getting squared. I've got negative four cosine t squared and negative four sine t squared. Again, we're getting the 16 on top. We don't have the one now, so it's gonna be 16 on top, 17 on bottom. Uh, which makes it four over root 17. So if we divide the tangent vector by that, 
to get our normal vector. The 17s are going to cancel out, right? The root 17 there and there is going to cancel. We will have a four on bottom. Looks like the fours are going to cancel. This four is going to cancel with those. And we're left with negative cosine t, sine, negative sine t, zero. I wish all these problems could work out so easily. So cleanly. Now the question was find t of pi over two and n of pi over two. So let's do that real quick. T of pi over two, pi over two was right here. We're doing plugging in tangent there. Uh, sine of pi over two is one. So I've got negative one over root 17 there. Cosine of pi over two is zero. So I got a zero there. And the Z component was one over root 17. The, the pi does not affect it. And if we're looking at the normal vector at pi over two, we've got negative cosine of pi over two, which is zero. Negative sine of pi over two is negative one and zero. Wait, tangent's got a four in it. Got a question over here? He said it. Oh, never mind. There we go. I'm like, this does not make a unit vector. I, I recognize that if I took the magnitude of t of pi over two, I didn't have one. And I realized I missed the four right here. Colors on white, kind of, kind of hard to read. You want to try the lights? Huh? Oh yeah, light? sure. Thanks. You guys want to dive a little more, or is that good? That's good. Yeah, it's good. Right. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, Ryan. I can't see the four out here. It's not the one. And I'm going to show you a shortcut uh, after everyone's done writing this stuff down. Is anyone still writing down this uh, T magnitude of T prime? All right, I'm going to erase this line right here. Yeah, I think you're good. Eric, were you done? Yeah. Oh, okay. Still right so if you if you only need the value at a single point and you're not concerned with the rest of it, you can stop your calculations with the general T when you get T prime written that way. You don't need to find the magnitude of it, which can save you time because the magnitude, when you've got all the T's in it, while it was easy in this problem, if you watch the videos, it gets it pretty tedious at some points. If you just need a single point though, at this point you can stop and put the pi over two in and you're gonna see we get, this is the prime version. Uh, we get negative uh, four over root 17, zero and 
Nope, said that wrong. Other way around. Zero, negative four over root 17, and zero. And then to find n, you divide this by its magnitude. And finding the magnitude of this is a hell of a lot easier than finding the magnitude of that. The magnitude of this is just four over root 17. It's the positive version, because remember you square it and then take the square root. So we end up dividing it by its value and we're left with negative one. And not only do you save this time on doing finding the magnitude in the general form of this, but if you need the binormal vector, uh, this works as well. You don't need to calculate the general form of the binormal vector, uh, the binormal, which can save you a lot of time. I, at this point, I can just find the binomial vector doing the cross product of these two. And conveniently, since n is a magnitude of one and t is a magnitude of one, if I were doing the magnitude of b right here, and the angle between them is pi over two because they are orthogonal. The magnitude of B is just one and you don't need to normalize it when you get it. If these are not normal vector or unit vectors here, uh, you do because there are there is another variation of calculating B. And we can chat to you. But it's easier when we do arc length. So I think we could, let's redo this problem with arc length. Does anyone need that last bit up there any longer? All right, so I'm gonna put this up over here, move this to the side for a second and add, we'll do arc length diversion here. Uh, so now it's find T of S and N of S. Again, if T equals pi over two, and we will use that same vector. Now, since less than half of you watched the videos, the shortcuts are the, the formulas we're looking at here. Uh, it's T of S is similar to T of T, except we have S in here, but R prime of S is dr dS and the magnitude of dr dS is one. So T of S is just R prime of S. which makes finding n of s pretty convenient because now since this is it all i got to do is find n of s is to, we're taking the derivative it's t prime over the magnitude of t prime so all the derivative of t of s is our double prime or second derivative of s divided by its magnitude And you can do BS the same way. Maybe I should say B of S. Uh, B of S can be done still with T cross N. But there is another version of this using the cross product. We can do R prime of S cross R double prime of S divided by, I think that's a little hard to see with that. Let me make, move it a little bit bigger. R prime of S cross R double prime of S divided by the magnitude of just R prime of S. 
you put our double prime for the bottom. It's supposed to be double prime. Did I say something different? You said you said just R prime. Oh yeah, it should be double prime on bottom. My bad. That was misspeaking. So notice when we're working with arc length, all we need to calculate, we need R prime of S, we need R double prime of S, and we need the magnitude of R double prime of S. And we don't need to find T prime or N prime or, or, or any of all that goodness. We can just work straight with this vector here, but it has to be an S first, which means to find S first, we need one more thing. These three are not enough. We need one more thing. The way we convert to S, recall, is zero to T, the magnitude of dr du. Du, which means we need also dr dt. And we just use, change the demo, dummy variable. We'll use that to get S. And then we can do all the rest. So we'll do that. We already calculated our prime in the interest of saving time in the lecture. Uh, recall it's negative four sine T, four cosine T and one. And we even found the magnitude. We got all the way down to finding the magnitude of R prime of T. We got square root of 17. So in the interest of saving a little bit of time, you'd still have to do that normally in the class or on a problem because you wouldn't have that information available. But we do have uh, DRDT or the magnitude of DRDT equals square root of 17. We will start our bit on arc length here. Uh, so S equals, we're integrating from zero to T. We're using dr du, but there's no U in there. So it's just square root of 17 du. I'm not gonna forget to integrate today. <laughs> that was fun yesterday when I screwed up big code. So U root 17 time, evaluated have... from zero to T. At least this time you don't have an E to deal with. Right. Uh, so we see S equals T root 17, which means the point we're looking for <clears throat> we're going to be looking at S equals pi root 17 over two. That's what we're gonna evaluate at later on. And we will rewrite our vector as R of S now. T is S over root 17. While you're writing that, I'm going to make room on the other board because I think I'm going to need it.
Okay, so now let's start gathering these components here so we can build T and N. So the first derivative. We've got negative four sine uh, S over square root of 17. I need to bring this down a little bit, give myself a little bit more room. Then we got four cosine S over root 17. I know I'm missing something. And this will just be one over root 17. Now, remember, we got to do the chain rule. So when we took the derivative, this generated an extra one over root 17. This generates an extra one over root 17. And the derivative here is one over root 17. So we can factor all those one over root 17s out, put it out front, and make by making that a one. We do our double prime. Uh, we again get that one over root 17 coming out uh, of both of these. This back, that part is going to zero. So since we're going to get the chain rule is going to give us another one over root 17, we're going to have just one over 17 out front. And now we've got negative four cosine s over root 17 and negative four sine. S over root 17. That's looking bad. Let's rewrite that. And I should probably put these in parentheses. It's starting to look a little bit sloppy. Now, some of you may be astute and notice uh, when we take the magnitude of our double prime, uh, I will have to square this number and then take the square root of it and it's gonna come right back out. So the magnitude of our double prime will have that one over 17 automatically uh, in it. But for those that are not comfortable with that, we will just do it the normal way. Uh, so we got negative four cosine of S over root 17 squared plus four or negative four sine of S over root 17. This is getting a little messy. Let me do it below. Again, I need another parentheses. And we have a giant square root. There, we're a little bit bigger, so it shows up a little bit better.
So we are going to get a 16 over 17 squared. Which ends up being four over 17. Four over 17. Give you a second to finish writing that out before I switch to the other board. Anyone need this up on the screen longer before I move it? Looks like everybody's good on one side. Say that again, Brandon. I think everybody, it looks like everybody's good on this side. Okay. So uh, we're looking for T of S and N of S. Uh, T of S was just R prime of S. And we had that as one over root 17, negative four sine of S over root 17, four cosine of S over root 17, and a one. And N of S, we need to do our double prime over its magnitude. So we our double prime was one over 17. And then we had negative four cosine S over root 17. Negative four sine of S over root 17. And a zero. And then dividing by the magnitude, the magnitude was four over 17. So I can just do that over the thing out front. And one over 17 divided by four over 17 is one fourth, right? Because we make this to multiplying by the reciprocal rather than dividing by it. So the 17s cancel. And the fours will cancel as well inside the function or inside the vector. We're just left with negative cosine S over root 17, negative sine of S over root 17, and zero. And we have. S was equal to pi root 17 over two. So we can find our values there. T of pi root 17 over two, what a number. It's just a good thing that the, the root 17 just cancel out. Makes it convenient. Right. 
So the root 17s cancel out on the in, in the arguments of the trig functions. Uh, so it's just back to the pi over two. Pi over two of sine is one uh, times negative four is negative four. Uh, we do the same here. Pi root 17 over two, the 17s cancel out. We have cosine of pi over two, which is zero and one. So I could move that root 17 in like that, make it look just like we had. Looks just like T of T, doesn't it? And then what we got for T of T? Should be the same. You should end up with the same values after you evaluate at a point. When we do N of S, And of pi root 17 over two. Uh, cosine, we plug in it into the first part, the root 17s cancel out. We've got negative cosine pi over two, which is zero. We plug it in right here. The S is pi root 17 over two. Again, the root 17s cancel out. We have negative sine of pi over two, which is negative one. And we still have zero. And that was N of T at pi over two, I should say. And this was t at t equals pi over two. So we get the same values. And I'm missing the vector notation. Good stuff, right? So, uh, actually, yeah, that is what we got. I got the T functions right down here. So this is what we got for T of T at pi over two and N of T equals pi over two. So I've got the same values, they match up. And if you need B, There are two variants for doing B of S. We can do T of S cross N of S, or we can do R prime of S cross R double prime of S over the magnitude of R double prime of S. Now, if we're only doing it at one point, and I already found T and N at that point. This is the easier choice. When you already have values, when you have, when you have T at S zero and N at S zero already. If you don't, if you're doing the general form, this is easier for the general form. And we'll do one with the general form tomorrow. And then pick a couple points to evaluate at. Uh, but since that's the easier one, all we're doing is a simple cross product. For cross products, I think I, I'm going to request that on the exams, you actually put the IJK in. Uh, I was being a little lax in telling you you needed to do it because some of you all have your own methods but it was fucking up some of you on the exam not having the ijk made you forget that there was an ijk uh and so that's that's bad juju we don't want that so we're gonna put in the ijk i tend to write the other values first because i never know how much space that shit's gonna take up And then I drop in uh, my IJK. Otherwise, if I write IJK first, I generally have them too close. 
And then I'm cramping to write the other line, other two vectors in. I mean, if so you ask me, I think, I think the worst thing you could do is draw the two lines first and then to write the numbers in. And I learned that the hard way. Say that again. Uh, when you draw the two lines uh, between for the matrices uh, first before writing the numbers in, because sometimes you write draw them too close and you get and you get them all cramped together. Oh, the two vertical lines. Okay, that's what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Do the I'll do the first line, but then the last line I always do that. Definitely. Don't. This should be the last thing you add when you're doing a cross product. Okay, so we have an I component that we need. Uh, and then we're gonna have minus a J component. Don't forget the minus is on J component only. And it's only in the cross product, the dot product, everything is positive. Uh, so what do we got here? I is zero minus a negative one over root 17. And if I do the J component, look at that. I got, looks like zero minus zero. That's handy. And if we do the K component, I've got four root 17 minus zero. So all in all, we've got one over root 17, zero and four over root 17. And that's my B at, I'm gonna just write as zero because I don't have room to write the big old pi root 17 over two there. And we'll do one more thing before we wrap it up. There's only a few minutes left. We're gonna verify that these are make up three orthogonal vectors. So how do we verify things are make up orthogonal vectors? Dot product. Dot product. Dot product. So let's, I will leave that stuff there. I'll start doing dot products up here. We don't need that anymore. We can do t dot n, t dot b, and n dot b. So t dot n. They can't quite see the top of the board. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. Definitely looks like zero plus zero plus zero. Check, check. B was one over root seventeen, zero and four over root seventeen. On that one, we get negative four over 17 plus zero plus four over 17. So that equals zero also. And we do B dot N or N dot B, the order of the dot products doesn't matter. Oh, that's seven.
<laughs> Again, zero plus zero plus zero. So they make three orthogonal vectors. Ta da! I know we have class again tomorrow, but as a reminder, I will be doing the Starbucks on Saturday and Sunday again if you're interested. And have a good day. Have a good day. Hey, Mr. Jones. See ya. Hey, brother. Good luck, brother. Yeah. Better not be Oh, the uh, I'm actually good, brother. I got, I got. I got. I mean, yeah, why not? Just take one. <laughs> Thanks, I don't know how to use this. So. Uh, Thanks, Have a good day, Professor Jones. You too. Have a good day, guys. Gals. Thank you. For tomorrow morning. Did anybody have any questions for Mr. Jones before I log him off? Uh, Okay. Oh, then I'll see you later, Mr. Jones. See you later, Brandon. Thanks for your help.